Well, we're very happy to have made an announcement today on the key issue of maritime boundaries. And it's an issue with which Australia has been associated with the SPC for a number of years, working very hard with partner countries to address what is a very important measurement tool uh, for them in protecting themselves. And we've committed a further $3.5 million today uh, to better address those risks from sea level rise. And in practice, what it means is enabling countries to identify their most vulnerable base points uh, and as well as taking action to stabilise those. And there are two ways of doing that. There's natural and uh, built. Uh, in natural terms, it means perhaps the development of things like mangroves. And in built terms, it might be land rec reclamation or rock walls or, uh, or something like that. So. Uh, over time, this has brought our total investment on maritime boundaries to eight and a half million dollars. Uh, and it's part of a much broader commitment which sees Australia spending a billion dollars over five years on climate change in developing countries. Well, as an aspect of climate change and, uh, and uh, uh, resilience issues, uh, it gives us a chance to see the Pacific in terms of an area that has some of the largest maritime exclusive economic zones in the world, 40 times the total land area. And if you just think about what some of the speakers said today, the work that the Cook Islands has done, the work that Palau has done uh, in their EEZs and the protection mechanisms that they have put in place, then that reminds us how vital marine resources are and how vulnerable marine resources and the Pacific is to climate change. So these initiatives to help us with the science, to help us with the data are very important. Um, not so long ago, in fact last year, the Pacific Island Forum leaders and the uh, Forum Foreign Ministers meeting uh, both recognised the urgency of securing maritime boundaries and also the need to address the legal and the technical implications. So when you think about the uh, focus on security from the Boy Declaration at the last Pacific Island Forum uh, leaders meeting. It's a great initiative and one which Australia is very prepared to support, very happy to support. Well, we think SPC is a natural choice for this sort of work. It is uh, the Pacific's own scientific and technical body. And from the speakers this morning, uh, they reminded us how important that scientific and technical advice and assistance is, that work is, and the multiple contributors who've uh, also indicated their commitment to further engagement today, including our expert speakers, uh, help the SPC to lead the region's efforts to establish maritime boundaries. So it's very relevant. Uh, to this particular contribution. Uh, we have uh, a long-term relationship, existing support, for example, to uh, 14 uh, meteorolo meteorology services uh, across the region through the COSPAC uh, contribution that, uh, that we make. We've also made uh, uh, announcements in recent times, including through our own uh, last election campaigns and all, about uh, a contribution from Australia on addressing uh, Pacific Ocean litter. Almost every speaker today spoke about uh, marine plastics and, uh, and ocean litter. I'm very pleased that uh, we can contribute in this way. I'd start by saying that oceans are critical to life on Earth, and ocean science is vital for our region's sustainable development. Most importantly, Pacific-led solutions to the ocean's challenges that uh, face the uh, Blue Pacific continent are uh, the optimal approach to addressing these challenges.